The Spin-Off Podcast Network. This is Kiwi is back for a brand new season with more inspiring kōrero from special guests including rugby player, father and role model TJ Peronara. My family bring me joy. Rugby brings me joy too, but it's not the same joy as my family brings me. And global dancer and choreographer Kirsten Dodgen. For some reason people think I'm very intimidating. Listen to the new season of This Is Kiwi, brought to you by the Spin-Off Podcast Network in collaboration with Kiwi Bank. Available now wherever you get your podcasts. Hello for lover. I'm Madeline Chapman, editor at The Spinner. If you have the means, consider supporting our high-quality journalism by becoming a Spinoff member. Sign up now at thespinoff.co.nz/donate. Kaura, Simon Pound from Business is Boring here, and I have a friend with me. Kaura, I'm Brienne West, founder and CEO of Atik, and I'm teaming up with Simon to host Going Global, a Business is Boring pop-up series on the Spinoff Podcast Network. There have been great moves in general New Zealand business, but our exporters are still looking a bit more traditional, a bit paler, a bit more male, and not really capturing all the creativity of the local scene. So why is this? What does it take to export? Why don't some people who are selling overseas think of themselves as exporters? And how can we change this? These are some of the questions we'll be answering throughout the series as we talk to six of our most successful and inspiring exporters. Join us for Going Global. You'll find it in the Business is Boring feed wherever you get your podcasts. Before we get into the show, if you enjoy our podcasts and value what we do at The Spin-Off, please consider joining The Spin-Off members. All our mahi is made possible by our members, and we wouldn't be here today without their support. Tōtoko mai and head to thespinoff.co.nz slash members to sign up. Look, before we get started, I need to make a disclaimer about the quality of the audio in the first part of this podcast. I forgot to record at my end. Uh, So the first part of this podcast is going to be the feed from the Zoom record, which is not optimal audio, but don't worry, at some point in the podcast, I realise I'm not recording and we rectify it. So just hang in there. Uh, Also, apologise about the nature of this entire podcast. It's a complete mess. Didn't know what we were doing. I've got brain fog from COVID. uh, So please just bear that in mind. Thank you for your thoughts and prayers. To the Sorry. Real pod. <laughs> oh. Wow, that's such an easy thing to get right, and yet you got it wrong. <laughs> I keep stum. Oh, I keep stum from now on. <laughs> no, don't keep stum because uh, I haven't seen all of the things that we need to watch. Hey, okay. well, hello, welcome. I'm joined by Alex Katie and Duncan Grieve. Uh, they are in the studio, and I am in bed. <laughs> Why are COVID. you in bed, Jane? COVID. I've got COVID, everyone. Are you the first person I nearly, to get I nearly COVID-19? Don't have it anymore. You're on your last day, well. right? Oh, God. I'm on my I'll last keep sure, day. Keep <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're doing incredibly well, Jane Yee. I really wasn't for a while there. Well, you've had um, a bad run, but look at you. You're, you're glowing. Am I? Yeah. That might just be the lights. But thank you. I appreciate that. appreciate that. We are um, we, we're recapping the block. We're back. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Well, no. no. But what is it? No, no, no. It's hard to sing now. It's hard to sing now. Did you notice? I didn't notice. Oh, my God. What? So it has changed. The block song has changed. Not only last year they changed and added the extra na, 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 na. But now it's completely remixed, cut up and destroyed by DJ Severe in a way that I've (laughs) never seen. It really has. I was going to say Magic Johnson, but you, you, uh, Magic Johnson? (laughs) No, no, no. I think it is his name. No, it's it's Dick Johnson, isn't it? Yeah, but it? I think he still is goes it? by Magic Dick Magic Johnson. I think oh, okay. that's right. Okay. If I remember um, my like mid nineties <laughs> George FM dance party heyday that I never attended, but I was certainly I would walk past their posters. <laughs> yeah, well there you go. I mean, okay, so anyway, just we we bring back the hits from the the late nineties. Um <clears throat> they've really I've they've fucked it up as far as I'm concerned, that music. It's mellowed out. Hasn't it? Well, I think the whole show has mellowed out. I think everything is mellowed out in popular culture. Have you seen the new Briscoe's ads? So no. chill. Everyone's just taking a chill pill. But the hey, block. This, no one this just seems like a phenomenon. This could be a phenomenon. I've only got Copyright. two examples. This went off. Get your hands off. Paws off. Stuff. 
<laughs> oh, actually, no. Pause on. <laughs> Pause on. Pause on. <laughs> wow. If that didn't make any sense to you, we have a like a lovely content sharing arrangement with stuff. We, we, we're friends with them. We are. They're our pals. Yep. And uh, speaking of pals, we're running a... <laughs> A Love Island, Love Island giveaway for I think one bag of tat that we have left. You have so to pick I... up. You have to live in the wider Auckland region or be willing to travel because it's simply too heavy. Well, what's in it? A box of pals. Vero pals, box of sangria mix, fake tan, sangria mix, chippies, chockey, chippies, chockey, popcorn. Um, Any Quay brand sunglasses or key no, brand? No Quay. I almost bought see. some for a bit. What do you think? Worth it? Which ones? Just any. Any? <laughs> <laughs> hey, if um, in, in, at time of recording, it appears that Ollie doesn't know that he's sorting out the mechanism for the giveaway on the Discord. We'll keep you um, posted on what, this developing but story. <laughs> but that's what's happening, Okay. If you want to get to the Discord, oh, I don't think we put the link in the episode description <laughs> oh, the last no. time. <laughs> we'll do it this time. We'll do it this time. Maybe. We're just real potting everything. It's the way, um, it's the, way the world. I feel like the world's real potting hard at the moment. Yeah, we did it We first. did it first, yeah. eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's all our real routine. <laughs> it means we have to go straight now, and I don't want to do that. <laughs> when we um, <laughs> Oh my god, we just can't gather our thoughts, can no, we? No, no. no, the block. Okay, well, well, let's start. Let's start. So we've got our returning teams for the block redemption. It's in Orewa, uh, four townhouses. One of them so much better than the others, mm. and one of them and so much worse. One of them so much worse, and that's uh, and that's just the houses. Let's talk about the teams. Um, we've got Marie and James from season something. Beep. Three. <laughs> Three. Three. Point chef. Yep. Um, were they point chef? No. Mm. Yes. They were the same as Ben and Quinn. Yeah, they? they were. They were. Yeah, okay. Mates. Yeah, that was that was definitely point chef. And uh Ben and Quinn, also point chef. And you've got who else? Ben, so ben, ben again. Ben again and Chloe. Ben again. Oh, Ben Ben again and M uh from Hobsonville Point, I'm, previously on different teams. Um from each other. And Chloe? now joined from this. Isn't it Chloe? Chloe. It's Chloe, not Chloe. M. See, this is the problem. They should never have done this, by the way. Well, I feel like it's also exacerbated by your COVID brain fog. Yeah, totally. But also, I just don't think, I think they surely could have found a team that was an original team. They didn't have to, like, jimmy two people together who weren't previously on a team together. Mm, but maybe this gets you, like, two sets of fan, fans in one, you know? Doubt it. <laughs> Imagine Dills and Dills if he's such good television. Terrible design. They'd have shift walls all through the whole the whole townhouse. <laughs> it's all gone to shift. Uh, and then who's our last team? Andy. Stacy and Andy. Adam. <laughs> Stacy and Adam. Uh, now married. And uh, Dick. <laughs> I'm really glad <laughs> that Adam. Dick. Yeah, I did. Wow. <laughs> oh. I'll say anything today. <laughs> That's a promise. Um, I'm really glad that Adam and Stacey are back purely because um, once upon a time someone raised uh, the notion that Adam was the man version of Alex Casey. Oh, my. And when you say someone, that is my life partner, Joe, <laughs> <laughs> who went as far as photoshopping my face onto Adam <laughs> and vice versa. But I think the glasses was doing, I don't know, I think the glasses was doing a lot of the work. A lot We've of the got different glasses think, yeah. now. We've changed a bit. But I don't know. What do you think? I just think it's nice to enjoy that. <laughs> While I'm watching, anyway, I just like to pretend it's you. I'd forgotten that, and I think that would have given me like thirty percent more joy. Yeah, so you're dark. Should we talk about our first first reactions? Yeah, look, I my 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 grand unified theory of why I found it a bit boring the first week was these people have all been on TV for a whole season before, and they sort of they know how to the things to not do, and and the sort of rhythm of a day, and the stuff that you later regret. I mean, and they were like none of them, unless I'm very much mistaken or misremembering history, were, were like the villains. Uh, you know, I think I think Adam and Stacey were close to. Mm. They were villain adjacent, but mainly just by virtue of being young. Yeah, you know, and and so like I guess my my general feeling was like I just and having watched like Love Island become a bit like nice people until oh my some bad God. things happen. What? I'm not recording. But but we've got a desk recording, right? 
We're not restarting again. That magic was... <laughs> that was crazy. Truly magic. <laughs> There's lightning in a bottle. <laughs> Piss poor pot alert. Piss poor pot alert. Oh, just quickly, I probably sound a bit clearer now because... Um, <laughs> what did you do, that- Jane? <laughs> I wasn't recording at my do? end. I wasn't recording at my end. So what you've heard <laughs> up until now is like a horrible Zoom feed. Uh, but now, now you'll be like, wow, this is, what a great podcast this is. The sound quality is incredible. Who is Now she? you know what it could be, uh, which is that horrible Zoom feed. And compared to this, you're like, these guys are really uh, knocking it out of the park week after week. Redemption. <laughs> Redemption. Live on pod. <laughs> Anyway, what were we saying? Duncan was you were, sh- you were sh- hating the block. The block. No, on the block. <laughs> I, 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 I was taking a giant shist uh, <laughs> on the block. Uh, no, I, I just I, I found it a, a bit of a, a struggle. Um, I enjoyed the 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 artwork and and you know it's cozy to to be home, but um, and I love to I love having Jason uh, back like that that. I'm listening to Unreal, that mm. um, the BBC podcast his, history about, about the history of reality TV, recommended by Alex Casey um, before her flop era started <laughs> <laughs> today, um, <laughs> and it's really good. And uh, it just talks about the power of Simon Cowell and and how important a villain is. And uh, yeah, maybe maybe that's where the the sort of tension is is going to come in. But um, yeah, so far just a little huh, for me. What about you, Alex? I found it chucklesome. (laughs) (laughs) I was chuckling away on the couch by myself, which I don't think I've ever done watching The Block before. Really? But this is hard for me. I have to declare I do, like, know quite a few people who've worked, particularly in post-production on the show. So I don't know if I can be impartial here. But I do like how they've chucked in a lot of, like, oh, cut that out, like a lot of fringe stuff. From the yeah. contestants trying to be cool or trying to like... Like Stacey looking straight down the barrel and going, oh, no, no, don't look down the barrel. Yeah, you know, the, the, yeah. The, the, the producer's being real present and the, the it's suddenly a bit looser. Very much enjoyed that, need more of it. Mm. And I do like seeing them. I mean, you say they all kind of know what they're doing, but Quinn and <laughs> Ben... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Quinn is the people's princess. I love her to bits, but they're clearly like they have not learned... <laughs> anything <laughs> since no, last what, time. They, 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 came, they came from quite early on in mm. their memory and James um, and they've been busy having children and things, you know, not a lot of time to, actually, not true. All of these teams bow one have since gone on to build their own home. Mm. Like, is that what happens if you go in the block? You just get the bug and you build your own home? Well, you get the cash. Big cash. Yeah, Big I know, cash. you can buy a house. Get one that's already done. One other thing, yeah. Quinn, Quinn and, and Ben's baby, that was uh, the baby that was one of the first ever spin-off posts written by your uh, your beau. <laughs> My beau. Um, and where he suggested names for the block baby, including drywall, which I just, always, whenever I think about the spin-off, like that <laughs> tiny post read by, honestly, would have been double-digit people. Yeah. Is just weirdly high in my. Oh, this is really going to work. <laughs> <laughs> Onto something good here. <laughs> and it was drywall brackets unisex. I uh, remember that. Yeah, drywall brackets unisex. <laughs> and they called him Cooper. And I'm yeah, just what's I'm, a I'm, I'm, I'm like, I don't. Well, a Cooper is someone who makes barrels. But yeah, I. Yeah, that's fair. That's, that's sort of. It's sort of in the realm. Construction adjacent. But I will forever know Cooper. No disrespect to you, seven year old Jappy, entirely innocent. But I will forever <laughs> know you as Drywall Unisex. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Um, what do you I, think, Jane? Are you having a nice time? I think, yeah, I've only watched episodes one and three because of COVID and some other important work stuff. Um, but I, yeah, I think it's a nice time. It's like a cosy warm blanket. I don't love that the houses are as done as they already are. Like, I w- I'd like to see some kind of leaking and, you know, that yeah. kind of stuff, you know, like having to sleep out under the, the rain. And But they're basically just walking in, all the framing's done, all, every, all the exterior's done. They should have to make it out of that big muddy lake that they had to get the sandbags <laughs> out of. That's that was quite a full-on challenge. That was crazy. Um, we Ben did like a massive oh, manner. No. <laughs> Straight into, uh, into Adam's Adam. face. He had his, and Adam had his mouth open. Honestly, all I could think of was, you can get sick from muddy water, right? Like, imagine if they all got the shits. 
I mean, great place to have the shits, I suppose, if it was to hit immediately. No one would even know. But, <laughs> like, that was really gross. And also, did they think this challenge through? How on earth were they seeing the colours of the little sandbags? Mm. I did not see a single colour the whole time through that challenge. It was they were a just struggle. coated in thick mud. I would like to know, how, how, do, you, how do you make mud? <laughs> how did they... <laughs> I think that might have been a pre-existing sort of a mud... A perfect mud it? square no. in the middle of all um, You draw. I think you just get in <laughs> with some sort of digger and churn it up and throw some water in, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. I'd there like go. to know. I hear, do, do you have any mud manufacturing theory? I'm on board with the digger water mix. <laughs> really don't have much to add here. I'm not sure what you're looking for. <laughs> uh, who won that? Uh, Chloe and Ben, obviously... Chloe and Ben won, and they chose not house one. Um, they tried to do, I think they were trying to confuse people with what they were going to do, and then, I don't know, they chose house two. It was like with the, with the Orlando Magic and the number one pick and how they sort of, you're nodding, uh, I hear, when they, they took they took Bankero, is that right? Mm-hmm. And everyone was convinced that the, there was either going to be Holgram or, or Simmons, right? Crazy, crazy head fake. So it's the same thing, exactly the same thing. Yeah. I can confirm the legitimacy of the analogy. <laughs> Thank, Thank God. you. I hear you really, you're doing a lot of hard work in this pod. Um, then uh, they also then chose everyone else's houses for them. So Ben and Quinn got house one, Marie and James got house three, Stacey and Adam, arguably the biggest threats in the show. Uh, got the dud house, house four. Because it's next to some stinky apartments. I know. Disgusting. No, but truly, compare the views of house one to house four. Like house one has got this beautiful vista out over the rolling hills and you can see the sea. House four looks literally out onto some walls of some other houses. Could be cool. Could be some cool people in there. <laughs> you never know. Did you know Alex lives in an apartment? <laughs> yeah, with some cool people. True. Hey, yeah. Alex. Beep. <laughs> talk about it. I liked how they didn't think that. The choosing entirely through, like, because it looked like it was just smeared and shit. All the different pieces of paper they were sticking yeah. up because oh, yeah. they were so muddy. <laughs> it looked so bad. I loved yeah, it. Yeah, that was, that was really televisual. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, what happened? What happened? So then they got they got told uh, it's going to be guest bedroom week, as it always is. They Whoever wins this wins not only 7K from our friends at TSB, uh, but also they win the opportunity to choose whichever bloody house they want. Uh-oh! Mum, number three. <laughs> What's up? Same little friend jumping on the bed. No, no, we're not doing... No, we're not jumping on the bed right now. Ow, ow, yes, close the door. <laughs> I think it's time to jump on the bed. If you don't get out and close the door, you won't get lollies. Go. <laughs> Go. Oh my, they just completely ignore me. <laughs> Doing an interview with the Prime Minister. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> close the door. That worked. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't close the door, though. Man. Hang on. I don't think anything's ever been less an interview with the Prime Minister than this. <laughs> We're navigating the largest inflation spike the country's seen in 32 years. No matter who you are, where you live or how much you earn, understanding the impact of the economic issues facing Aotearoa has never been more important. Kia ora, I'm Bernard Hickey and on my podcast, When the Facts Change, I want to help you understand what the changes we hear about in the headlines actually mean for you. I also happen to have a pretty healthy contact list of academics, politicians and leading economists to help us make sense of all this economic stuff. So join me every Friday for When the Facts Change, brought to you by the Spin Off Podcast Network, together with Kiwi Bank, and available wherever you get your podcasts. At Zed, we're all about moving with the times. And now it's time to be part of the climate change solution and move on from fossil fuels. As a company providing fuel to people all over the country, we also know we have a real opportunity to lead that change. We're committed to keeping Aotearoa moving by providing the right energy for everyone. We believe that innovation in fuel and how it's used can make a huge difference to our planet. Find out more at z.co.nz. Start your day with The Bulletin, a newsletter from the spin-off summarising New Zealand's biggest breaking stories and highlighting the best reporting from around the country. Sign up for free today at thespinoff.co.nz slash newsletters.
Okay, where were we? Ah, mud everywhere. Gallons of mud, the stuff. Mud everywhere. Oh, treating the houses, the houses, the dud house. Marty's back. Love Marty. Oh, I love Marty. His accent is so sick. Marty's got a wonderful accent, yeah. It's so good that he needs subtitles because he's so Scottish. But they didn't subtitle him. Sometimes they do. Sometimes he gets them. <laughs> Just as that's very the block. Is yeah. Well, they do it on occasion. <laughs> I like the way he says Ken instead of no. Yeah. Like, that's true Scottish. So you know? good. Oh, makes me weep. It's got to put a bloody uh, sass on him, though, isn't he? Is he Italian Scottish? Do you know Alex? Mate, uh, yes, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, he has that sort of look, the 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 um the vibe, and that would be you know like just is there what's I'm just going to completely <laughs> what what's the deal with with the the, the Italy Scottish connection? Because we've already mm. seen it um, on on Love Island with Jay with Jay. And of course, me. And of course, you. Famous That's why I'm Italian Scottish. It at you. you look nothing like Marty or Jay. I have an. I have. A, I have a nonna. <laughs> well, had. <laughs> um, who moved to Scotland from Italy when she was a child. So what's um, going on there? I don't know. Maybe there's some kind of deal. <laughs> like, like a like a trade deal. Fresco's trade deal. Discount on boat trips. Come on over, baby, as they say. <laughs> in, in Italy. <laughs> As Christina Aguilera herself said, not Italian. <laughs> Is she Italian? No. <laughs> I've got a, I've got a question. What does swarthy mean? Uh, I think I, I choose it to, to think of it as someone who's got like a five to seven o'clock shadow. <laughs> yeah, right. Because I always thought it was someone who was kind of like a little bit rough and kind of like handsome and piratical. Muscly. Piratical. Don't you think it would be a good word for that? But actually, it means hairy, doesn't it? Is that right? I hear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, have we stumped him for the first time ever? <laughs> I always thought it was to do with like complexion, like uh, like another word for ruddy. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. But um, I actually think it's oh, yeah, it is. It's dark complexioned. Hey. Oh my god, I hear hey. you're right. What's the hey. one that means hairy? What's the one that means hairy? Oh. Starts with B, maybe. Beauty. Her suit. Is that what you're thinking of? <laughs> oh, that's no. good. No, that's a great word though. How are you so smart? I can't think of a single word. I think it's no, maybe it, because like, he doesn't just... watch like hours and hours of reality TV <laughs> every week for years. It's just a guess. Christina Aguilera is not Italian, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> just done the research. <laughs> hey, um, for the blog for redemption. <laughs> Oh my god! Uh, okay, so can we talk about this redemption factor? Because I don't think there's some teams there that don't need redeeming for a start. Marie and James just there for a nice time. Like they they basically said, the, our redemption arc in this is that we just want to do things a little bit better than we did last time. And they don't want to cry, but then they cried straight away. Yeah, so much crying. Uh, should should have painted the window sills a different colour last time. So we, we're back, baby. Uh, everyone else has got a bit more more to prove. Except for architect, architect Ben. He did all right, didn't he? I think there were allegations. Remember someone said he got his degree from a wheat box. <laughs> wheat box. <laughs> box. I think he's Wasn't got something Wasn't that someone at the spin-off, wasn't oh, it? Oh, was it? Yeah. It seems like something so. jo- Joe would say. <laughs> <laughs> I think they'd get in trouble a little bit for their, like, coffin on the roof and stuff. The coffin flop. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm... Oh, God, I've totally lost my mind. I can't think of anything. What happened in episode two? Episode two had, um, is this Knobs and Knockers (laughs) from Ben, who was on a hunt because they forgot to order doors. (laughs) He's like, we've got everything sorted. (laughs) Then they realised they forgot doors, so it was quite uh, quite a good montage of him trying to ring up for doors, which I don't feel like we normally see them say things like, I'm on a TV show and I need need doors by Friday. But do you hear them say, I'm on a TV show? You hear them say, I'm uh, I'm on the block. Mm. I'm on the block. I like the way that they uh, strongly, you know, the the, the whole package was about how work shy Ben is and how he likes to just be on his iPad and his telephone um, while Stacey does all the work or the tradies do all the work. Hang on. Ben. Stacey? Yeah, well. Chloe. (laughs) (laughs) Chloe. Chloe, Em, Stacey. (laughs) We all know who we're talking about. Can we talk about the Starbucks nook? Yes. One of the cushiest little nooks. I do think they're having a nicer time. Like, they've got their beautiful, beautiful beds, courtesy of Beds Are Us, and their nice little 
plush dressing gowns and they get this lo- like lovely endless Starbucks in the morning. Yeah, we haven't seen the like the solar shower come out or anything like that yet, you know? Like in in seasons of yore, they used to have to like stand outside and shower from a bucket. Um <laughs> And then, and then, pee in the bucket. It was, you know, it was a different time. <laughs> the same bucket. What show are you watching? Bucket. <laughs> I may have brain fog, but I'm pretty sure that was the case. No. <laughs> yeah, no, the living in conditions again, having roofs for a start. You know, it seemed rather nice and luxurious. The beachside, it's uh, it's a lovely time for them. I reckon I could do this season. Really. I was just reminded of how much I don't want to do the block. That was my main takeaway from watching the block. The well, should we just talk about the rooms now. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Is there anything else to add in terms of? I don't think so. There's no bank of mark this time. No so bank of mark. What they do with the cash. Um, I think. I mean, I. I'm not sure I ever got to finish saying my first impressions, but I think it's like a nice, cozy, warm blanket of a show that I'm quite happy to have back on my screens. Agree. So, Duncan, I think you just need to you need to lean in. You oh, know, I'm don't le- come I'm, at it with your guard up. I'm not, I'm leaning in um, <laughs> as a, as a man. <laughs> that's, that's what we do. I'm thrilled to have Jason back as well. Yeah, look, look, I, I just need to provide necessary tension. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I just need a little bit more um, drama. Uh, that, that's that's my request for the block, which which I'm sure will like the. the the tension will come as, as the season goes on. Rooms. Aren't they rooms. all exactly, they're, single, they're all the same They're the room. same. They all look the same. They're all the same. They've all got the back, like, remember Nikki and Tiff from Meadowbank? I feel like they debuted that kind of half back wall headboard situation that goes across right across the back wall. And I think that that is, they've really, it's done. I think it's been done. I think it's time for a new thing. And yet, Every single one of these teams did this. Yeah. I was spe- especially disappointed in Stacey and Adam because they can pull out some freaky stuff when they want to. The hands are coming out the walls. Zigzag. Zigzags, glorium. <laughs> but maybe we'll get that now after the hush, the Jace, the Jace effect, as I like to call it. <laughs> yeah, they were just, I mean, they were all pretty rooms, but they were super underwhelming in terms of anything innovative or like major sort of design elements. Do you think I it was know. because it was like a guest room and they might not get to keep it and they had almost had, maybe they got together and had some off-camera packs where it's like, let's just do something real normy mm. and not like make it. Nah, because this is the dif- this is the difference between getting Glorious House 1 or one of the other shitholes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you, you've got to push the boat out on week one, surely. I think, um, I think Stacey and Adam's room was the nicest out of all of them. I think they. I think the judges called it right, but honestly, very much all of the same ilk. The main thing I think we need to discuss is Artgate, wherein <laughs> James's quite good picture got voted bottom, and the second worst picture won. Chloe's. Yeah. Well, discuss. I was Team Ben from the very beginning. His lizard, his lizard <laughs> version of Mark Richardson was absolutely stunning. It did have like an intense outsider art type quality. <laughs> did you see this challenge, Jane, or was this episode two? Episode two. No. Oh, yeah. Well, you were asking about a challenge, and there was like a really big honking <laughs> great thing. challenge that dominated the episode. They had to paint Mark Richardson, but from, what, like a few metres away using rollers and brooms and all sorts, and... Um, they all did, like, quite a good job. I was impressed no. by Adam. Adam did, like, an incredible gower. <laughs> yeah, that, that was quite, had, like, a kind of New Zealand gothic to it, for it sure. But but um, but James's one had this kind of, like, swoopy kind of, like, like, it looked like a proper one. I was impressed with his, like, the collar. I remember him doing quite a yeah. beautiful job of the jacket. Yeah, it, w- it was sad. But I also thought it was really cute how Quinn immediately recognised Ben's shithouse one because the, the partners had to come in and do like a blind ranking. And um, she gave that one 10 because she knew it was Ben because it looked like a lizard. <laughs> yeah. And it looked real bad. It <laughs> was then, incredible. <laughs> they, then we got to know a little bit more about their like love story and that they met when she was working in a sandwich shop and Ben knew that Quinn liked him because she always gave him heaps of chicken. <laughs> Like, like too so, much So much chicken. he had to toss some choke. So much chicken that he had to take it out of the sandwich. And then one day he came in and was talking about how he got a new phone and got to choose his own number. And I guess told her the number in conversation. And then he got home and he had a missed call from her. 
She knows what she wants. It's a love Quinn. story of our time, it honestly. Is. I'm obsessed with them. <laughs> she doesn't overthink things, does she? No. Is Quinn just, you know, follow the basics. Like the man, give him some chicken. <laughs> yeah. Get his phone number, call it, you know? Hey, these are good at this good at one, to be honest. Need to paint a room? Green. <laughs> <laughs> but how many different yuck shades of green can one Swampy, woman find? Swampy, shrecky green. <laughs> Snotty, spewy, like upset guts. Wow. Crazy insane. greens. They cut that right next to M going in and grabbing some beautiful toned swatches of green um, as well. And then they'd like cut back to Quinn and she's just got like bright green, vomit green, <laughs> like all the bad greens. It's quite amazing because if you're Rosine, I feel like those should not be available. <laughs> They're just, there is no useful function for those greens. <laughs> They're just yuck. It's bad for your brand. <laughs> Shrek the musical is in town, though. <laughs> it, is, it is. So Adam and Stacey won. Great. We had a little tease of next week. We don't know which house they're going to choose, except for I think they gave it away in the promo. What do you think? What, what, what was it? What should, well, should I say? Yeah. Okay, so in the promo for next week, they've got uh, Adam and Stacey sitting discussing their new room whilst sitting in their current spare room. Uh, mm, but that could also mean that they've ma- they're just gathering their possessions ready for no, the old no, switch. No, she was sat down at the desk. They were, I reckon they were, I reckon they've stayed where they are. I'm obsessed with Stacey and Adam. I love their dynamic. Yeah. <laughs> it's so strange, and I feel like just <laughs> Stacey being like mega alpha, <laughs> crazy design whiz, <laughs> loves shopping. Oh, I just I want the I want them to have their own show. <laughs> Yeah, the energy's good on this. The energy's good on this. I think they, they're they going to be the source of some tension. But I think they would have it in them to steal the house one. But I feel like maybe they don't. Maybe they just, I don't know. Maybe they thought Ben and Quinn's guest room was so bad they just don't want to um, have to deal with it. Who knows? It was real funny as well when <laughs> Wolfie came in and was like, this paint job is real bad. And then Ben started just scratching at it with sandpaper and Quinn was like, it looks like cat scratches. <laughs> They're just a disaster. I loved it. <laughs> I don't want them to have the same arc that they had last time. I want them to win something, anything. I think it's relatable. Cool I like seeing people just tank stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think in 2022, that's what the public wants. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also next week, what's so, oh no, I don't know, there was something else in the private, I've forgotten. I've forgotten. That's the real pod. <laughs> even by real pod standards, even by current like arc of our show, this is a bad episode. One of your eyes has been closed for ages throughout Really this. bad yeah. episode. I'm so sorry. I have um, COVID? anyone who's had COVID and had the brain fog and the losing of your words in your mind, that's me at the moment. It's impressive that you showed up. I reckon you might not remember doing this. All right, I promise. I promise I'll be better next week. I've got the brain fog. It's really messing with me, but um, I reckon I'm on my way back. I'm, I'm here for redemption, baby, and I will hopefully be able to form actual sentences Next time, fingers crossed. I hope we haven't put you off watching the block with us. Can we do like a <laughs> next time on the real pod type thing and we'll just like throw forward to all these calamitous moments, but... But what will it be? We'll have to sort of make them up, just sort of freestyle. Oh, some no! Not, <laughs> not again! <laughs> not again! Not again! <laughs> oh, Duncan stole my house! <laughs> No, 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 we're not doing the block. We're just doing the real pod. The real pod. What n- no oh. disaster. And then something from my hair? You haven't been recording? <laughs> <laughs> Ollie Chick said what? I'll cut all this. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's our podcast. Thank you very much for listening. Promise next week will be better. Uh, and we will we'll see you then. Okay? Thanks to your hair. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. From the Spin-Off Podcast Network, you've been listening to The Real Pod. It was hosted by me, Jane Yee, along with Alex Casey and, most of the time, Duncan Grieve. Tiahe Butler made it all sound good and Rachel LaRue got us out to the world. New from the Spin-Off's business editor, Chris Schultz, together with Kiwi Bank, comes Stock Take, a weekly newsletter about the people behind the businesses driving Aotearoa along with stories about how forces affecting the economy will impact the lives of New Zealanders. Sign up to Stock Take now at thespinoff.co.nz forward slash newsletters. 
Kia ora, this is Toby Manhire, here to urge you to tune in to Gone by Lunchtime, a podcast with me, Annabelle Lee Mather and Ben Thomas, tackling the world of New Zealand politics, from policy to polling, from scandal to psychodrama. Listen to Gone by Lunchtime, brought to you by the Spin-Off Podcast Network, wherever good pods are sold. Kia ora e te iwi, te ai he butler here, podcast manager at the Spin-Off. If you enjoy listening to our podcasts, consider supporting our mahi by signing up to become a spin-off member at thespinoff.co.nz slash donate. The Spin-Off Podcast Network.